The marketization of the Chinese economy starkly illustrated the inappropriateness of market provision of services such as healthcare. At the same time, ironically, the very success of the marketization of other sectors in triggering rapid economic growth has put new pressures on global markets. The opening up has also meant that because countries like China and others are more wealthy than they were, that they've started to spend money on other things. One of those is food. And going forward, the thing about food is that it's not that they, they don't want to consume the basic um, vegetables and rice and that sort of thing. They want protein-based diets, just like the West. The problem with protein-based diets is that producing animals and eating them is incredibly inefficient. And it could mean that going forward, we're going to see much higher prices for things like grain and probably agricultural commodities in general. Food prices go up, those that can afford it will still buy, and of course the poorest parts of the world and the poorest um, economies will suffer. The failure of the market to allocate food fairly, rather than an overall shortage of food, lies at the heart of the intermittent food crises of the early 21st century and illustrates how individual self-interest can operate through markets to generate instability and inequality. The market is an allocator of resources. Is it a good allocator of resources? P perhaps not. It, what you see is it's a very good place where for transparency and getting a clearing price and so on. So is it the best way of distributing whatever it is, money within the economy? Well, not necessarily. You have a price, uh, but the distribution of goods, it doesn't mean that it's fair. One of the great failings of the global economy of the last two decades is the way that it's seen a continuing uh, maldistribution, a negative redistribution of wealth from poor to rich. Um, in the 1980s, which was known in development, human development circles as the lost decade of development, for every $100 worth of global economic growth, about $2.20 found it to that proportion of the population living under a dollar a day, the absolute poor. Um, in the 1990s, the decade in which we had this kind of long chain of UN conferences setting up the Millennium Development Goals, um, the share of the poor in that notional $100 worth of global growth had shrunk to 60 cents. So we've ended up in a bizarre situation in the global economy under neoclassical nostrums where to get ever smaller slivers of poverty reduction has required ever more overconsumption by the already rich.